Welcome to the Cinema Cafe. Uh, so the idea here um, is that we have a little bit of a more time to have a conversation. Um, you know, quicker than a Q&A. It's not as quick as a Q&A. Um, the fun thing, of course, is that none of you have seen this film, um, but I have, so <laughs> I can be your proxy. Um, uh, I guess, um, really quickly, if you guys wouldn't mind just telling us a little bit about the film, like you know, the, the thing that you tell someone if you wanted them to see it. Go ahead. <laughs> That's the first time we've been asked this question. I know. Um, we've got to have a good elevator pitch. Like, we have to come up with a good slug line. Yeah. I mean, I, was, I think that the film will be something that you're not expecting. That's one of our hopes, but I, I yeah. think that's actually true. It's kind of a hybrid in terms of genres. It's not a documentary. It's not a concert film. Uh, it's something that explores both those things, but it's very genre bending and kind of part thriller, part comedy, part meta documentary, and very strange um, in, but, in honor of Annie's uh, wonderful music. <laughs> okay, I'll just leave the last part out next no, time. That, that was good. Thank you. No, that was good though. You've, you know, yeah, yeah you caught it. us early in the, in the press junket, so we haven't... Great. Yeah. Yeah, I, wa I want you guys, like, uh, Absolutely. as uncomfortable as I am. By the end of the day, we'll down. be automatons, but right now, <laughs> it's taking a second to think. I mean, I think the thing, and again, you know, no spoilers or anything, although the film is kind of so amazingly bizarre that it would seem like you could say something that happened later in the movie, and it wouldn't necessarily spoil much, um, uh, I think. Um, but one of the things that I really saw with the film is the way that it takes the audience on a journey from with the characters um, from a place of normalcy to somewhere very different. How, how did that develop? Like, how quickly did you get to where you wanted to go? In the writing process, in the conceiving of it? Uh, well, the, it started out as just a straight ahead, um, well, I guess it was never going to be straight ahead, but I asked Carrie uh, in the end of 2017 when I was in the midst of touring my last record if she would help me make a concert documentary and it would be concert footage but also kind of these interstitial skits. Is, maybe sounds pejorative, but uh, is it? I don't think so. Okay, sketches. Yeah. Sketches, sketch, sorry. Yeah, Ske yeah and, sketch, yeah. that's better. Um, and um, so... She finally agreed, and uh, then we kind of took the idea to Topic uh, Studios, and they were very excited about it, and I think they had no idea, nor, nor did we, what it would eventually become, but luckily they were supportive every step of the way. Yeah, I think as we started to think of it as these interstitial sketches, we realized there was a disparity between uh, Annie's sort of St. Vincent persona, which is very heightened, and revels sometimes in artifice or plays with that, and then things that felt um, pedestrian or loose or clumsy, which is some of the charm of sketch. So that felt like, like kind of disparate elements. So we then decided that maybe we should write something that's more narrative, that actually speaks to authenticity, the, the artifice of authenticity, the, art, the inherent kind of artifice in documentary, you know, that it's usually not as real as we perceive. It's usually something that's kind of manipulated um, to some extent. So then we ended up writing a narrative film and, and fictionalizing ourselves, which I think allowed us a lot of freedom and just made it into the film it is now. So we definitely stepped far away from our original intention, I think for the, the better. And we were very fortunate to work with producers who really trusted that process, mm -hmm. um, because it definitely was not what we had pitched, but I think it, <laughs> it exceeded all of our expectations and turned into a movie that um, is unique, and we're, we're really proud of it. Yeah, I don't think this story has been told. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm, not, I'm not like an authority, but I will say, in my experience, yes. <laughs> this one. Um, that's great, um, Carrie, you actually said a bunch of words that I had written down to bring up later, so now I'm like, uh, moving around, but I think that the, this idea of persona for both of you is really interesting, um, uh, and especially your characters in the film. Um, it seems like uh, 
whereas you guys are, are sort of longtime friends and obviously have a lot of connections. The, the place that you find yourself in the film and maybe even sort of presentation publicly is one where it's like a, there's a status play, there's a, um, it's like a, a comedy duo almost. You know, there's a Laurel and Hardy thing of like, Andy's like so precise and, and, and you have a little bit more uh, looseness to you um, in, in the film. It, how much of that is based on reality and how much of that is like, well, we need to figure out a way to differentiate because we are similar and we're friends, you know? I mean, I wouldn't say I'm known for my physical comedy. Yet. Yet. Um, but you are very funny. I mean, <laughs> you are. You are. Um, I think what we were more so than thinking about, you know, who are we off screen and who are we on screen, we were, th we were thinking about well, why is there such a premium on being likable and relatable and, you know, that, um, you know, at the same time that you're supposed to espouse all this mystery and speak to this, you know, everyone wants music and art to have this mythology and have this ineffable quality to it. Mm -hmm. You're also supposed to be, you know... A, Just a, a normal girl. Yeah, a real person that, you know, Instagrams what you eat for breakfast and divulges your makeup routine or, you know, and it's, it's that's kind of a weird juxtaposition because we often, you know, are drawn to art and, and artists because they defy those things, because they, they aren't hitting something right on the nose. Um, so I think more than figuring out, well, who are you and how can we deviate from that, we were just playing with ideas of, um, let's get to something truthful through a lot of fictional routes. Mm -hmm. And I think too, I mean, in watching a lot of documentaries, in, in general and seeing a lot of music documentaries, there there are tropes and there is a sort of, there is an arc to uh, to them for the most part where there's always a, uh, a going back home sequence where you know there's the kind of see how far you've come, there's always a childhood struggle or some kind of deep struggle. Uh, there's usually a sort of love life gone askew due to the grueling demands of being a pop star, or whatever it is, and so we do we do touch on all of those tropes. Um, it's just not it's not the familiar arc, and I think we uh, I don't want to say satirize because it's not like a takedown of other music documentaries by any means. It's just uh, we wanted there to be some kind of familiar uh, plots or tropes in it. Um, that brings up an interesting point too, which is you know uh, obviously both of you came to prominence as musicians first, and you know Carrie has a, a longer career of also making film and now TV and sketch and all kinds of things, and you're also have been doing that for a long time. I mean, even together, you've been working on this kind of thing for since like um, was it uh, uh, your, your second album? Maybe you collaborated with a Portlandia video, right? Mm -hmm. um, what like? Because you, you say, I've watched a lot of music documentaries and documentaries in general. Like, is that sort of the arc? Like, you watch so much stuff that you're like, oh, man, I, I need to make this kind of thing now? I don't know. I mean, I think it, I mean, it started out in earnest of, you know, of, of, I think when Annie was uh, doing some press for Mass Seduction, we did sort of this fake press conference um, that I helped write. And... So it was an earnest endeavor. It wasn't, we weren't out to skewer anything or oh, we've seen all. so many music documentaries and now we want to make a, a mockumentary that felt sort of anathema to what we wanted to do. We, we set out, you know, um, with, a, with an intention to just make a good film. It just mm -hmm. was that when we were leaning too hard into the, the comedy stuff, it just didn't feel like it acknowledged sort of what St. Vincent is, you know, it just, it was just moving too far afield of that. Um, I think if anything, w we're acknowledging how much we uh, like immersing ourselves in other people's stories, you know, whether it's a musician's story or another documentary, I mean, those things are really fascinating. Mm -hmm. But we just had a lot of questions about what makes someone relatable or interesting, and we were trying to sort of dissect that. Yeah, and it turns out we had no idea See, Annie is the funny one. She's just, this is our, this is our dynamic. Yeah. She's just one, what, one liners. Well, you set it up, I just knock them down. Thank you. I don't, I don't know where that leaves me, but I'm excited. Um, 
uh, I, that totally makes sense. I think what also what I was trying to get to, and, and forgive me if I didn't wasn't clear, was also it seems like um, I've sort of read in interviews and things, and, and know from friends who are musicians that a lot of touring is is waiting, and so a lot of that waiting involves watching. Oh yeah. And and that it seems like your development as artists into you know film and 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 sketch and comedy and things like that. Um, might have been spurred by just being fans of, of those things first. I think, too, to kind of touch on something you're getting at, I think Maybe. when... <laughs> no, I think when musicians, in my experience, especially ones who kind of have come up and, like, started in the minivan and then graduated to the 12 passenger, and then maybe, if they're lucky, like, get to ride in a tour bus. Like, there's a, there's a level of... Um, humiliation that you just have to get very comfortable with and if in in my experience because you're all just like these weird pirates on a ship of humiliation there's a lot of <laughs> the ss <laughs> the ss shame you know you're you're you have to get a sense of humor like you and you have to get comfortable with um things not going well and things being insane so i feel like there's the dna there with the both of us and maybe that was I mean you've are, are obviously brilliant and was always a writer and things like that but that maybe uh, anesthetized you to some of uh, the obstacles that might come from people who weren't performers or hadn't had really shameful experiences <laughs> yes <laughs> we're we're bonded by shame yeah well, you guys both also, especially in this film, but in, in the other things you've done together, you know, it seems like a big part of your sense of humor does come from, like, um, awkwardness and uh, the, uh, the comedy of discomfort, you know, um, which does come from a place of, of being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's interesting to think of it coming from, like, you know, when you yourself are the product you know, that goes on stage for this whole group of people who are traveling together, you do have to sort of abstract yourself a little bit, right? Like there's you and then there's the, the thing that you're all doing. Yeah. That's also like you physically, but maybe not you personally. Does that seem right? Or? It, something you're saying, I think feels right. And that there's like this weird level of object, uh, like you have to try to get as objective with like almost disassociate. Yeah, I think that's in, right. In order to like look at yourself with some some sort of um, it, yeah, to like lens. almost ha handle your yourself or to believe in yourself. I think up there, you do have to kind of distance yourself from the quotidian over and over again. You know, because it is it's so monotonous to be on tour and and humiliating, as Annie said, and you have to have a lot of humility. And then to get up there and to expect people to be on board with you for you know an hour and to let go of all the things that feel silly and trivial in the day, I think mm -hmm. takes a little bit of um, yeah disassociating, which is weird because and I think some people then end up staying in that world. You they sort of create a silo for themselves where they have to stay there in order to believe in it. But people with a little more sanity, which I. I'm putting both of us mostly in that category. Yeah, I'll um, take it. Yeah, I think you do have to fluctuate between those two places, and that can be jarring. But it all—I think the sense of humor is what helps you cope. Mm -hmm. uh, disassociative is exactly the word I was looking for. Thank you. Anna. Yeah. But yeah, no, that 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 you can see that in the film too. And so, I, it, what's interesting to me is you know when you talk about how you pitched more of a traditional concert film with the sketches, and then you get to this place, which is again, no spoilers, highly disassociative. <laughs> um, uh, what was that collaboration like, like as you were writing? Was that just like a sit down and you're looking over each other's shoulders at a, at a, at a, at a laptop? Was it you know, sending things back and forth? Or were you in the same place even? We were in the same place for a lot of it. Um, I'd say that Carrie did the heavy lifting on the writing and it, a lot of the ideas came from the two of us riffing mm -hmm. and then Carrie would kind of go, go through and really organize it and um, codify it. Yeah, and then we sort of switched with the music. I mean, Annie's written a really incredible score, and 
uh, original songs. So we, we sort of, there was a collaboration, but I think that we play to each other's strengths and I think that's, that's what makes us good collaborators is that we trust each other to sort of speak in the other person's voice artistically um, within this context and you know just al gave the other person space to to do their thing knowing that we could weigh in and that there were you know moments to make adjustments and edits but yeah yeah no we sort of, about it yeah we just kind of handed things back and forth a real two-hander yeah does it feel similar to collaborate on music uh, and and like a film or, or, or you know something more comedic like is it the same process you know it's the uh, no I don't think so exactly I mean we there's a th I hope it's not a spoiler but there is a theme song in the movie that kind of factors pretty heavily into the um, into the plot and um, I mean Carrie just came over to my studio and we wrote that in a day Mm -hmm. It was like, and what about this idea? And then, oh yeah, and then it goes like, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, it was just completely, um, it just kind of came out. Um, and it, the song itself is pretty episodic, so, you know, um, that, well, I guess maybe, maybe it is similar. I mean, in that we can kind of riff for days. Yeah, I mean, I think we just, we have a lot of ideas and I think it's just, it's a lot of just editing and paring things down and and trusting. And also we have this really amazing director, Bill Benz. Um, he was so good. And you know, he he really, he looked at the script and and posed a lot of questions and, and forced some changes that I think were for the best. You know, mm -hmm. he really wanted character development. I think it's, it's sometimes when you're writing with yourselves as the characters, it's easy to develop the shorthand that doesn't actually serve the audience very well because you just, you know, you, you assume people know things that they don't know. Yeah, and so, you know, Bill was really um, crucial in stepping in and, and being a good director and, say, and saying, what if you change this? And, you know, so we would do rewrites and, yeah, so the, everything, and, and Annie's the same way with music. I mean, thing, the ideas happen really quickly but then you get fastidious and perfectionist about it, which refine, I think- Refine, refine, refine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm interested in the collaboration w uh, with your director. Um, he, uh, you previously worked with him on Portlandia, mm -hmm. and is that, is that how he came in? Like, did you seek him out? For, like, he was someone who you're like, oh, this is the person we need to sort of be the, the third, the, the invisible third, or? Yeah, I mean, I think there's, you know, there's always this, lists that people give you of directors and they were all amazing but you know often you'll will be reading about someone else that got a chance like oh you know this man or woman just you know they got their first film and it was like well why don't we just give someone their first film otherwise we'll just you know like we'll lose that opportunity and Bill is such a talented director and so again with great producers who are trusting of us they were on board with Bill um, Definitely didn't take much for him to prove himself. He came in with a ton of ideas. And it was also really important because Annie and I have such a shorthand, but we're also, um, I, I mean, we're just opinionated and we're stubborn and we needed someone that was willing to work with us, but also who we, we trusted to um, take the reins. And I knew they would get along and they did and have worked since then on other things. So it was a really fruitful collaboration. Mm -hmm. I want to change just a little bit to talk about um, the way you guys are categorized, right? Like, um, it again, you know, Carrie, maybe I'll start with you. Like, you started with music, and then you start to move into other realms. What, what was that like, like, sort of pushing against the boundary of, like, oh, I know who, who Carrie Brownson is. She's a musician. You know, and you're like, oh, actually, I'm going to do these other things, too. Weren't people kind of mad at you? <laughs> like, weren't musicians kind of like, wasn't there? <laughs> or was it just me? It was just you. You were mad. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I feel like sometimes exter people's external, you know, ex external ideas of who you are and who you consider yourself are very different. Yeah. You know, I mean, to me, there's a seamlessness. I feel like I'm a writer first and foremost. I write music. I write for TV and film. Like, that's the through line. And I'm always trying to tell stories. I'm trying to form a connection with an audience and say something earnest and honest or, you know, get at something interesting. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like that's for other people to sort of, you know, place on me and my job is to just make work I'm proud of. So yeah, I don't, I wasn't 
worried about it. Maybe people were mad, and I'll uh, address them each um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, with a heartfelt just, apology. Just, just get the names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just give me a list of. Um, who's mad. <laughs> but I, I, I mean, I think that Handles. Annie makes a good point. Like I, I, there are. I mean, even within like the the film world, you know, when an actor steps out and becomes a writer or a director or both or something else. Um, there's that moment of, of people sort of reshuffling where they have them in their head, kind of. And, it, mm-hmm. and I think it does often cause consternation to some people that they're not doing exactly what they've done before. Um, yeah, I think there becomes sort of essentialist, you know, ideas about who someone is or what they're capable of. And it, it does feel like a responsibility to, to do things well. I mean, you know, with, um, I mean, I think we share that. Like, there's, you know, nothing that we want to do half-heartedly or, you know, so it's, it's kind of just about doing the work and, and making sure it's good. But yeah, I guess that's, I mean, I actually think the other way is, right, you can go from music to acting. But oh, you acting, cannot go from acting to music. Yes, that's, <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't work. Yeah, but that's, it, yeah, so we're, we're heading in, well, wait, you just set yourself up. Oh, no, 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 you're no, no, fine. No, because I went music to acting. Yeah, we're, so we're fine. I'm we're good. fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> By the paradigm you've set up, you guys are doing great. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Cool. <laughs> so there's just that safety net. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Do you feel any of that too, Annie? Like as you're starting, obviously this is sort of a, a you've done a lot of little things, but this is sort yeah. of a bigger step. Does is was there any pushback like either um, from people you didn't know or even from people you did who were sort of like, what What are you doing? Um, no, I don't think there was a lot of pushback, but it does. Um, you know, we wrote this film, we were, you know, we had dates on the book to shoot it, and then I was like, it occurred to me right before we started shooting, like, Jesus Christ, if I suck, this whole thing, like, this will ruin this whole thing, because it is actually acting, it's not, um, I mean, I'm playing myself, but it's, but it is more than... Right, and I also I remember like, because... That's an incredible amount of trust, and I can't, I frankly, I can't believe that, that people put money behind it. She's they, great. She's, she's <laughs> great in the movie. No, really, I she's mean, I appreciate it. I but really also, I remember it. you saying, hey, can we just, like, improvise some of the stuff? And I was like, no, you will be saying exactly what's on the script. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is um, <laughs> Amy Sher- Sherman Palladino over here. Just... <laughs> um. And we did fall. I mean, I think yeah, also no, because scripted. we were on a tight shooting schedule, so it's like there's only so much you can just get in there and like play around. Like there's, you know. Also, like I don't really like jamming as a musician. I don't. I don't really like jamming as an. That seems like it's a different movie. It's a different me. movie. Yeah. This isn't a mumblecore film. <laughs> although, although those are great. Those are great. Those are great. <laughs> I'm just saying it, it was scripted. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to stop talking for longer to see where this... Nope, yeah. nope, okay. nope. I have to ask another question. We're good. We um, prepped ourselves on that. We were like, don't keep talking to Phil's space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Floor is yours. Okay. Um, what is your experience acting, Annie? Because, um, you know, Carrie mentioned it, but, like, you're incredible in this movie, and, and you are doing things that... Um, aren't necessarily <laughs> you, you know? Right. I, I, and you do have a stage persona, and, and that's something that you've developed over years, but even this is sort of separate from that because it's not just a performance persona, it's an interactive one. Yeah. Um, well, I didn't really know if I could do it. I mean, I did high school theater, uh, which we, I put on my resume for topic. <laughs> what, no, what was, what's the best well, about that? Well, I played, uh, you might remember me from my role as Helen Keller's mother in The Miracle Worker. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or uh, perhaps the Queen of Hearts in a musical adaptation of Alice in Wonderland. So, no, I hadn't really acted. But, and I know this sounds really stupid, but... It was kind of easy because you just pretend that things are happening that aren't happening. <laughs> I'm giving a workshop later if anyone wants to do it. I could see the class now. Yeah. <laughs> pretend that things are happening yeah. that aren't happening. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's awesome. I, yeah. It's really interesting to hear just because it, it does feel... Um, you know, just from a, uh, well, from my perspective, I guess, like, that would be so daunting to put yourself out there that way. 
Um, but then again, I guess, you know, to, to your point earlier, you, you guys do have a lot of experience like taking sometimes very private things and, and making them into things that people are humming as they do dishes, you know? Mm -hmm. So it must sort of, maybe that's an easier connection to make somehow that, that you're more emotionally vulnerable as an actor because you've done some of that as a, as a songwriter. I know not all your songs are like highly diaristic or whatever, but some must be, so. Totally. Yeah. More, more so than people think, I think. Um, that wasn't a joke. <laughs> for that, for the, soul, the soul chuckle in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that this will lead to more collaboration between you in the film space? I mean, maybe. Yeah, we're working on an adaptation of The Miracle Worker as we speak. <laughs> That's news to me, but very exciting. <laughs> Got to start somewhere. Um, do, do, I mean, would you be open to um, performing other people's stuff now that you've done your own? Like, is it something that like you want to look at more? Or? Me? Oh, yeah. um, I I would. This is. I mean, this film in particular it was like a very cozy, warm bath of a way to get acting in, in that I co-wrote it with my best friend and star in it with my best friend and I play myself. So it's, you know, I'm not sure that it shows uh, the extremes of my range, but um, but yeah, I would. Um, but what I really like too is control. And so, and it doesn't seem like actors necessarily have that much of it. So I, I yeah. So yes, with an asterisk. Was that too honest? No, that's very, I, love, I like the honesty a lot. I appreciate it. And I also think it just means we can write more things for you to be in. Yeah, great, great. <laughs> what about you, Carrie? I mean, I know you've, um, you know, reformed your band and, and uh, you know, it seems like, uh, are you also continuing to just sort of do both and all? Like, it's, that seems so overwhelming in some ways. No, I, I'm... I'm very much into focusing. I really like to focus on writing and directing. Those feel like my strengths, um, less so than being in... in there are, you have a lot of strengths. I appreciate that, but I, I feel like that, just in terms of qual life quality and focusing on something, and it, it feels like more that than necessarily being in, in front of the camera. Like work-life balance. Yes, that's how work-life balance is so important, for women especially. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I wanted to ask um, was about sort of to go back to some of the persona stuff we were talking about, the um, uh, intentionality versus auth authenticity, you know, the, the idea that like you were saying, oh, people like their, you know, celebrities to be wide open and, and to know everything about them, you know, their, their toast and things. But then also, you know, they want um, everything to be sort of perfect. Um, w while you were, making this film, were there things that felt like too much to reveal, or was it more about um, finding things that felt more uh, like things you'd seen in other people's lives? It kind of, some of the things that we wrote into the script, to me, felt like hiding in plain sight. Mm -hmm. They were really close to the vest and really, you know, in some instances, really painful and very real. Um, and in some instances, things that had been talked about in the press uh, about my life that I didn't get to, I didn't get to tell that particular story or, um, and so this was like, oh no, we get to, we get to tell our story um, in a way more entertaining way than I think the Daily Mail or somebody would. Did I just slam the Daily Mail? <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> um, somewhere, someone was like, oh, Time to start tweeting at you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, what about um, being funny? Because I, I feel like uh, y um, your music, especially Annie, like is, is hilarious. It's, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't necessarily have the same humor that you do in this film or that you seem to have in interviews and your performances as a, an actor. But is it? Is it? I thought Strange Mercy was some of my funniest work. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I guess I guess the answer is like, I don't know. Do you want to answer this? About you? 
I mean, the, Annie's I, just, she's just immensely talented. I mean, it takes a, an artist to be able to do what she does musically and... I'll do the next one for you. Okay, but I just okay. mean, like, that's why she's an incredible artist. Like, she can make records that make people feel a certain way that are serious and um, complex and multidimensional and then, you know, be really funny in person. I mean, that's just, that's who she is. I mean, that's part of her brilliance. I think maybe because it's like a, it's almost like by genre, like we expect some kinds of musicians to be funny and other ones not to be, you know? And Who, yeah. who do you expect to be funny? <laughs> I think, um, <laughs> no, no. I think like, like rappers are allowed to be funny, you know? Like there's like, they can write jokes into their music in a way that might be more difficult for other people to do. I, I'm, you know, I mean, whatever, like there's people whose music is just straight up funny, but I you know even though I think about like, you know, Sometimes David Bowie would do funny things. Talking heads could be funny and strange. You know, there's mm -hmm. there's lines that get crossed, and and I think obviously we see I see at least a lot of influence from some of those artists on your work too. But it's just interesting to think about like oh, the if I were to like think of your genre or or your type of music, um, which is pretty singular to be fair, um, it isn't necessarily one that I would associate with with like jokes. You know. Thank thank you. Wait, no, uh, uh, no, but I think there is, um, there's a, there are, uh, uh, there is a level of sardonic humor in some of my lyrics, certainly not all of it, but that uh, it's a little more subdued. It's not like a flight of the concords or something, but there's some funny things. Yeah, and, and wit and uh, yeah. absolutely, I'm not <laughs> discounting that in any way. It just, I just, it's an, it, I guess for me, it was an interesting juxtaposition to see you performative, like as Saint Vincent, the the character mm -hmm. in this film, being funny because that was something that, like, you know, your stage presence doesn't necessarily always in, in incorporate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I sure. think it was an intentional intentional in the writing and in the conception of the film to explore that, you know, explore that disparity that you're talking about you know, that might feel jarring and to explore wh why it is jarring. Yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know. I mean, is that is that something that you're hoping to like provoke response f uh, f from? Like that, that, like that was done intentionally to sort of like see what people and institutions will respond with, you know? I don't think so. I don't think we, I never know wh what people like or what people will think. Yeah, so I can't. You can't. I could never, you can't really like reverse engineer that. I think we just wanted to, in in a very um, fictional, spun out way, be ourselves. Yeah, and make and make a good movie, and not worry about you know provoking people or. Yeah, that wasn't that was not the intention, to provoke. Yeah. Um, what would you say uh, are some films that um, you were watching or? Um, incorporate into your thought process while you were making this film or developing it that you know whether they're surprising or not well I I guess on the first call with Bill Benz the director I said please watch the cook the thief his wife and her lover that's where we want to go with this film <laughs> <laughs> there's less sex and nudity in this movie than that yeah, yeah. yes that's there's just like some pretty intense they're oh that's a I love that film <laughs> I know you do we were thinking of Peter Greenway, and then also Love Peter Greenway, um, privilege, and uh, performance. Nicholas Rogue. Yeah, Nicholas mm -hmm. Rogue. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, um, lots of that. Yeah, lots of those sort of seventies like performance and privilege are both films that adhere very loosely to a strict narrative, <laughs> and I think we wanted that freedom. Mm -hmm. But it's it's like they revel in in the deviation, like they really revel in the weirdness of it, and I think. We were up for that and just committing to that, you know, just trusting that the audience will come along with you, I think is something that we really, in the editorial process, especially every time we tried to like bring it into something more normal, we were just like, why are we doing that? Like we wrote a weird movie, we filmed it in a way with, you know, three different like ratio aspects and, you know, it's like part film, part video, like let's just commit to the strangeness of it and, and we did. Mm -hmm. Was it hard to track the sort of like inception levels of reality in your film? Like, 
because obviously, you know, you do it, once you see it, it, you're saying it's exactly that. The ratio is like help the audience sort of parse that. But in, in terms of like filming and even writing, was it hard to sort of know where you yes. were? Yes. I mean, we had three different POVs and three different levels of... Yeah, it was tricky writing. and But Bill and our DP, um, Minka Farthing Cole, they were just, I mean, they kept track of that. And they were very... Um, well, they wanted to trust the audience, but but they really also they were very um, studious, I guess, about mm -hmm. you know moving forward with it, and they kept track of all that stuff as we went forward because it, it it was you know from a camera perspective, it's it's tricky, and from a directorial perspective, it's tricky less for us once we're on set because we're just in the scene, and mm -hmm. you know however it's being shot, it's being shot. But yeah, it was hard. Um, I want to talk a, a little bit about. Um, like fear and failure, like because uh, that's I find that so interesting, especially for artists, like and, and successful artists. I think um, a lot of people see uh, your careers and they're like, these are people who succeed all the time, and 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 I feel like a, you know I haven't gotten there yet, and so I you know they've they've never tasted failure or anything like that. And, and what's always interesting to me is to to have <laughs> successful people talk about failure because I think it makes everyone understand that it's part of the creative process. Um, but specifically for this, like, we, are you guys? Was, was there fear that it wouldn't work, you know, that, that what you were trying to do wouldn't, was like? I, I think it's a combo platter because there's a, there's a certain level of, if you're not afraid when you're doing something, then you're not doing anything interesting, you know? If you're not putting yourself in a position that's uncomfortable, that you don't really know where it's gonna end up, then in my experience at least, you don't get anywhere kind of worth going. Um, but then there's another thing that happens when you've you have uh, you're studious enough or whatever it is or have will enough to you have done and completed multiple things to where you just know I don't know how it's going to get done and there's a mystery to every process but like it will get done we will finish this this will be the best we can possibly make it so it's a kind of dual conscious knowledge that it it will happen, and also a total, how the fuck are we gonna do this? So, you know. The leap of faith. Yeah. What do you think, Carrie? Like, is, where you, you is there any, like, <laughs> trepidation, like, letting this out into the world, you know? Cause I, I mean. Right, well, that's sort of different. Like, once you finish it, I mean, I think you, uh, there is some trepidation, or just, you know, there's part of you that has to sort of say, I, I don't care what people think, but then that's, barely true you know yeah. what I mean yeah <laughs> like who doesn't care what people think I mean we're very proud of it but of course there's some fear that you know it will be vastly misunderstood or underestimated or just disliked mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh yeah hopefully not <laughs> but yeah. of course that's that's a fear but then earlier in the process it was sort of closer to what Annie was saying yes or, yeah and, yeah that you know you want to go in with some of some of that nerve I mean I think that's what like allows you to take risks and sort of be on that knife edge the whole time and and make something surprising hopefully to yourself and to an audience um and you do have to have a bit of faith in it but you know it's nice to kind of ride that edge of you know of nervousness and panic Pan yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, I, I can't think of a better place to end than that. Um, oh, please join me in thanking both Annie and Carrie.